Hello, this is Coach Wilson, and this is Unit 3, Day 9. Today's journal and your last journal for the unit. I would like for you to, going back to the Washington era, discuss the reasons both the French and the British would be upset at the United States. Include how this affects the United States and how the United States will respond. Respond through the years of 1789 to 1812. So what I'm looking for there is for you to just talk about some of the issues that we've had with France and Great Britain over the last 20 years. And there's been quite a few issues there. Please make sure you include all that you can. Now, in today's notes, we're going to finish up Unit 3, and we're going to be talking about the War of 1812. Now, the War of 1812 is important because it was between the United States and Great Britain. It's not Revolutionary War Part 2. It's the United States fighting to be establish itself as a nation. Now, we're already a country, but we're going to establish ourselves as a nation on the world stage with this war because now we're going to say that no longer is the United States open for colonization. No longer can you come back over here and rule us. Now, um, the war was fought against Britain and those that were in Canada who were British. It was called Mr. Madison's War. It's just kind of to give you an idea of the who was laid the responsibility of it, James Madison obviously being president. And the cause of the war, the big thing here was impressments, taking of U.S. sailors by both the French and the British, but with the British, more specifically, there were a lot of other issues underlying there. British had been giving weapons to Native Americans in the Northwest, and many of the war hawks in the United States wanted to invade Canada. All right, and more so than anything, and this kind of is always the issue that leads to wars, it seems like, the U.S. cannot compete economically with Great Britain and it impressing our sailors. Now, the U.S. isn't ready for war. We still have a very weak army and a very weak navy. Uh, most of the battles are going to be fought in the north, and you're going to see, you know, that Great Britain still has forts here. They still have troops here. Ever since the Revolutionary War, it's kind of like we just picked up a little bit where we left off, and there was a lot of bad things happening here. We attacked, and when I say we, I mean the United States attacked uh, York, the capital of Canada, and they attacked United States Capitol in D.C. and burned it, all right? Uh, during this time, you're also going to see the National Anthem is written by Francis Scott Key. He writes that while observing a battle. Uh, we'll talk about that more in a second. Uncle Sam is created as a national patriotic identity during this time, and the end of the war is going to also coincide with the defeat of Napoleon in Europe and France. Now, the USS Constitution was our most important ship, and thank God it was a good one because... It never lost a battle, and cannonballs would actually bounce off of the live oak sides um, during the War of 1812. Okay, These uh, live oak trees have been pulled from the Cape Fear, and this ship withstood it all. Okay, uh, The USS Constitution is considered one of the main reasons we were so successful on the sea, but also it was a, a sign of nationalism and just this kind of growing patriotism towards America because it inspired People that, hey, it's it's never losing. You know, as long as we have the USS Constitution, we're going to win. Now, uh, there were also battles that took place on the Great Lakes. Obviously, there were ships from Canada uh, where the British had been that were there. There were ships that Americans had that were there. Oh, sorry. Um, led by Oliver Hazard, Oliver Hazard Perry. Um, he was able to build up our fleet at least enough to take on the British and was able to win victories over Britain in 1813. And his success on the seas is going to inspire American nationalist spirit. And that's just going to increase this idea that, hey, we got to defeat the British. we got to push them out. And more so even that, than that was when uh, Perry made this statement that we have met the enemy and he is ours. Now, in Chesapeake Bay in 1814, the British attempted to invade uh, the area of Maryland and Virginia. It led to the British taking Washington, D.C. and burning the Capitol and the White House. James Madison was forced to flee so fast, in fact, that he had to leave his meal. And then the British troops ate it. And pretty pretty bad. You paid the man's house, and then you take his meal. Uh, but they did eat his meal before burning it. I'm sure it was probably tasty being at the White House. And then they moved to Baltimore. Okay, Unfortunately for the British, they were defeated at Fort McHenry. And this is where Francis Scott Key pinned down the Star Spangled Banner. There's a picture of the White House on fire and the British troops marching away. At Fort McHenry during the battle, Francis Scott Key penned the national anthem as a poem while on a ship in the Baltimore Harbor, and then later it was expanded upon. Now here you can see the battle going on at Fort McHenry. Okay, the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in the air. Okay.
Okay, kind of gives you an idea of why it was written that way. Now, the Treaty of Ghent was signed in 1814 between the United States and Great Britain, urged partly by European powers. Um, Russia was fearful of um, France and afraid that, you know, it was going to lead to a world war where the United States would have to get involved with um, European affairs and they would have to be involved in theirs. There's just a lot going on in the world today. Uh, John Quincy Adams and Henry Clay are sent to negotiate and help uh, negotiate the treaty between all of these nations and trying to just end the issue between the United States and Britain. And the armistice ends the war. Basically, there's no land gain. People just stopped fighting. And crazy enough, the fighting actually continues. And that's going to be one of the last things we talk about today, which is the Battle of New Orleans. January 8, 1815, almost a month. Let's see, we had... Uh, December 24th, so you know, less than two weeks after the armistice is signed, Andrew Jackson is leading a group of Native Americans down to New Orleans to fight. Of all the things, Andrew Jackson had been fighting against Native Americans and then had managed to convince them to help him fight down in New Orleans against the British that were still there. Andrew Jackson was made a hero out of this battle, outnumbered greatly. He only had 45 deaths. During his time, he actually had a great plan there. You can go Google that. It wouldn't take you but two or three minutes to read how he set up like a parapet and all these things to try to protect his troops. But they killed over 2,000 British troops with only 45 deaths on their side. And this victory is going to increase pride and nationalism. But more importantly, this battle is going to be fought before anyone knows about the peace treaty. So the peace treaty gets signed and the information hits America on January 9th. And it looks like Andrew Jackson ended the War of 1812. Now, here's where this gets tricky, and this is the important thing to note here. You have the Hartford Convention going on also during this time after the armistice is signed and before Andrew Jackson's Battle of New Orleans. So this is stuck right in the middle of all that. And what happened was the Federalists, they, they support Britain. They didn't like the war with Britain. And so now they've discussed this idea that they're going to secede from the Union, and these all these northern states are going to make their own country, and they're going to make a new country and make the United States a separate entity, okay? This is one of the first times we see sectionalism in our country, and I think a lot of times we, we hear the Civil War, we think, well, the South was the only group, you know, that ever tried to secede from the Union. In fact, the North actually tried to secede from the Union because they wanted to support the British, and this is, you know, 50 years before the Union divides in the Civil War. Now, Here's the problem with this. When the War of 1812 is over, the Democratic Republicans look like the hero because they won the war, and the Federalists, they're seen as traitors for supporting the British because they're having this conference, and then right as they're getting ready to end this conference, Andrew Jackson wins the Battle of New Orleans, and then all of a sudden the war is over, and they look like the traitors. The results of the war, and this is kind of just to sum it up, increased U.S. manufacturing, increased nationalism, patriotism, and honor for U.S. as a country, and it established the United States as an independent power in the global stage. Now, here are your four questions. Make sure you get those answered. Uh, please let me know if you have any issues. And then here are your four vocabulary words. Hope you have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.